We present Mind's Eye by John Murphy from an idea by Gemma McMullen and Jerry Casey with Dermot Crowley as Lorcan Malloy and Kathy Belton as Aoife Malloy. Episode 5, Lodgers. My name is Lorcan Malloy. I am a psychotherapist. As a psychotherapist, one needs to be aware The less aware we are of our motives, feelings, thoughts, actions, perceptions, the more they control us, and the more we stay stuck in old patterns that don't work anymore. Relief from symptoms lies in discovering and incorporating into our constant, everyday consciousness those things which are being masked. The key is awareness. After... 30 years, I know this as a fact. I know that if I were perfectly aware, I would have no symptoms. I would learn from my mistakes. I would not hurt the ones I love, nor be drawn to those who hurt me. I know all these facts. And yet... How much further is this place, Daniel? Patience, we're nearly there. That's it. Up there on the left. Finally. You see the gates? Oh, it is a beautiful house. Yeah, well, you didn't have to grow up in it. I've never really appreciated it until now. It's a prime location for us, all right. Just let me do the talking, will you? Mum, good to see you. Daniel? Uh, This is my friend Gillian, Gillian Power. Hello, Mrs Hamilton. She's not a friend, Daniel. I'm not stupid. I know well who she is. She's a property developer, and you're wasting your time. I'm not selling. She only wants to talk, Mother. Just hear us out. We're acting in your best interest. Oh, don't pretend that any of this is for my benefit, because I know better. I just want to show the lady around the house, Mother. It's not convenient, and you'll disturb my guests. Mrs Hamilton, we really don't want to disturb you, but I do wish you'd at least listen to my proposal. Daniel, what are you doing? Just taking some photos. The guests won't like that. Mother, there are no guests. There haven't been any guests for years. You don't understand. I understand that you are going to bankrupt us all. Daniel, please, uh, let's just have a look at one of the guest rooms, can we? You can't go up there! Come on, Gillian, let's go and meet one of the guests. Room two. Let's meet the people staying in room two. Uh, Daniel, perhaps we could continue this another time. You can't just walk in on our guests. The hassle is stuck. <gasps> it burnt me. In my hands. This... House isn't safe. You're not safe. I warned you. I'm not selling. I am not selling. What on earth just happened? Your hand. (sighs) Daniel, please. Can we leave now? She is losing her mind. If I can't put this deal on the table, at least in principle, within a week, then we can forget about it. You'll get the deal. Leave it to me. Aoife? Yeah? Have you got a minute? Sure. Come and see who's here. Dave, you remember Aoife? Well, of course I do, dear. Though I'm ashamed to say I would have passed you by. You've blossomed. You've really blossomed. I don't expect that you remember me, though. Yes, I do. I had a lot of fun in your house when I was little. I used to visit with Mum. Yes, we were great friends, Jenny and I. Oh, my goodness, you remind me so of her... Oh, sorry. Uh, I don't mean to stir up old... Ah, that's OK, Mrs Hamilton. Oh, please call me Maeve. Maeve. Are you still in that wonderful old house? Oh, yes. I can never leave that house. I hardly ever go out anymore. Uh, you'll stay for lunch, Maeve. You're very kind, but no. Actually, I called in to ask you for some advice. Of course. You remember my son, Daniel? You and he used to play together. Yes, How is he? I'm afraid that we've rather lost each other at the moment. He left home long ago. He manages some of these leisure centre places. Always busy, you know how it is. Oh, you're very lucky, Lorcan, to have Aoife follow you into the family business. Yes, we have our moments, but it makes for an interesting life. (laughs) Daniel hated the guest house. Couldn't wait to leave. He'd never come near the place, but now he's back. 
And so, what's wrong? He's saying terrible things about me. He says that I'm unstable and that I'm losing my mind. He's even been to my GP, and now he wants to refer me to a psychiatrist. Why is he doing this? Because he wants the house. He wants to sell it, and I won't. I can't. He came to see me with some sharp-dressed woman. They want to develop the land. I wouldn't sell. And now he wants to put me in the madhouse so he can take my house. Maeve, no one's going to place you in a madhouse. I know you always thought I was a bit odd, Lorcan, but this is different. My sister suffered with nerves, Aoife. She had a terrible time. I've always been afraid it would happen to me. And Daniel is using that against me. But I'm perfectly rational. I know I am. The thing is, I know how these things work. I just don't know how to defend myself. Oh, Lorcan, would you please just talk to Daniel and talk some sense into him? I'm sure this has all been blown out of proportion, Maeve. We can't get involved in your personal relations. I'm sure we can find time to speak to Daniel, Maeve. I'll bet it's nowhere near as bad as you think. Oh, thank you, Aoife. Oh, oh, it's so good to see you again. You remind me of the happy times. And look at you. You really did turn out to be a princess. Oh, I'll see myself out. Oh, thank you both. Bye, Maeve. I really did want to stay out of that, Eva. I think we owe it her to at least speak with Daniel. They've just let things get out of proportion, that's all. So, Daniel, we're sorry to barge in on you like this, but your mother came to me asking for advice. She's an old friend of the family. I completely understand, Lorcan. I can see that from her point of view, this must be very upsetting. But my mother needs help. I am just trying to do the right thing. Aoife, you used to come to the house. Yes, when I was small. My mother brought me. The house was a great playground. You're lucky you didn't have to live there. But she still manages to run a business, doesn't she? No, actually, she doesn't. The place has not made money in years. She buys food, does laundry, books people in, but she's not taken one single cent in the last three years. Uh, do you mean that she's letting people stay free of charge? No. She was always prone to bringing home waifs and strays, but this is beyond that. Now her guests are imaginary. There's no one there. It's all in her head. You're sure about this? I've been there. There's no trace of credit cards, checks, no bank transactions, and nobody there. <sighs> I don't quite know what to say. Look, I know you want to do the right thing by her. I appreciate your concern. I don't want anyone thinking I'm forcing her out. Go over there and visit her. Have a look at the place and see what I mean. God knows she'd be glad of the company. Ah, oh, come in. Come in. Hi, Maeve. <laughs> You're welcome to my house. Wow, this is amazing. It hasn't changed a bit. I don't want it to change. My guests like it like this. I mean, it hasn't changed at all. The layout, the furniture. I remember this leather sofa. And that picture of Phoenix Park. We used to hide in the cupboard under the stairs. Come and see. Oh. <laughs> there. <gasps> That's it. Dad, this is where I used to hide. Uh -huh. Mum would want to go home, but I loved playing here, so I would hide in here when she called. Haven't you a great memory? <gasps> Come on, let's have some tea. Mm. I've made you some cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> they really are much nicer than they sound. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, we, uh, we went to see Daniel. Did he tell you I was unhinged? He said he was concerned about you and your finances. Money. He's concerned about money, all right. Those developer people dangle a cheque in front of him and that's all he can think about. He says that your business is not financially viable. And do we lock people away now because they don't make money? Take a look around you. Does it look as though I can't take care of myself or my guests? Daniel says you have no guests. I have guests. Guests have always been welcome here. I don't advertise and the people that come here want to be here. Are there any here now? Yes, some regulars and some new arrivals. We haven't seen any, Maeve. Oh, you'll meet them soon enough. After dinner, we normally gather for a chat. Ah, um, unfortunately, Maeve, we'll not be able to stay that long on this occasion. Oh, not stay for dinner? But I insist. You can't drive all the way back across town in this weather. 
Oh, I've really had my heart in both of you staying the night. I've made all the preparations. Uh, no, really, Maeve, we must get back. We'd be delighted to stay, Maeve. If that's what you would like. Yes, thank you. I'd like that very much. That's settled then. the woman she was. Daniel may have a point. Oh, the family did have a history of mental illness. Hmm? Her brother hanged himself. Oh, now you tell me. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Sir, wake up, sir. Sir, wake up. You must leave the house. You're in danger. What? You must leave the house. You're in danger. Dad, smoke. I know. Go on now. Get out. I'll wake the others. Get up! Everybody! Get up! Fire! Fire! What is it? Where's the fire? <coughs> Coming from over there. <laughs> yes, Barbara, please. Raymer Guest House. That's right, near the park. <coughs> it's all fire. A fire extinguisher in the hall. <coughs> we have the kitchen fire. Eva Malloy. I'm a guest here. Thank you. Please hurry. Out! Come on! Eifert, this is terrible. I'm so sorry. Safe to go back in now. The damage is mainly superficial. Smoke, mostly. You caught it early, Dr. Malloy. It could have been far worse. But what caused it? You left the cooker on, madam. Oven and hob. You have to be more careful. These things can be fatal. I did what? But I always check. Well, tonight you didn't. <sighs> Dr. Malloy, I will file a report. I'm afraid I will have to notify the social services. Will you remain with Mrs. Hamilton? She's suffering from shock. I don't think she should be left alone tonight. Good night. Good night. Good night. But, Good night. I, but I didn't. I didn't leave it on. I always check. I followed the same routine for nearly 40 years. I always check. It's okay, Maeve. You need to rest. But I nearly lost my home. What would my guests have done? I checked every room on our floor. There were no guests. There are guests. They've gone off somewhere. They don't like fuss. A man came into my room to raise the alarm. Who, who was he? What did he look like? I, I, I didn't see him. I heard his voice. You were talking to someone called Max last night. Who's he? Max is Daniel's father. Pardon? I thought Daniel's father was dead. Oh. He's still with me. He's never gone. He came to the house many years ago. He was tormented, out of his mind. He was a priest, but drummed into it by his family. He couldn't keep his vows. He tried hard, but after ten years he couldn't take it. He was ashamed. He ran away. He turned up at the guest house. I remember. Jenny met him. Yes, Jenny always understood. He found peace here. We fell in love and he finally found some happiness. Then, when Daniel was still a young child, Max was taken from me. And you still talk to him? Yes. He found peace in this house. He was able to cross over. 
Now other lost souls find me. They stay until they are ready to cross over, until Max comes for them. He's a gatekeeper to the next world. Without this house, they might be lost forever. Come on, Maeve. Come on inside. Hi, Brian. Look, sorry to wake you. No, no, everything's fine about Paris. Look, we've a bit of a problem. A friend of the family. She suffered a trauma. We need a hospital bed. Well, somewhere she can be supervised. Yes. Thanks. Great. I'll see you there. She's not well, is she? I'm afraid not. Was there definitely someone in your room? Yes. I heard him. Thanks. There are no guests, though. No. The rooms were empty. If she is running the place into the ground while she looks after invisible guests, then, like it or not, Daniel has a case. What next? You and Brian are going to go to Paris, and I will make sure that she's all right. I'll come with you to say goodbye to her. Uh, Lorcan, there's a friend of yours here. He's been very helpful. Uh, hi, Lorcan. Aoife, nice to see you. Fergus, what are you doing here? I heard about you in the overnight dispatches. A hero rushing fearlessly into the flames. He was. Never thought of you as the Indiana Jones type. I was surprised to hear that you were staying in a guest house, Larkin. Has your house been repossessed? Thought business was booming. Uh, Mr Rayner was telling me that he's worked with you in the past. He's a specialist in the paranormal. He says that he knows I'm telling the truth about Max. He knows why I have to stay in the house. Did he tell you that he's a journalist with a tabloid newspaper? No. What... what do you mean? He said he's here to help me. I am here to help you. Mrs Hamilton, unlike me, nothing that you say to this man is in any way confidential. Go, Fergus. Get out. I don't know who you think you're talking to, Lorcan. You should be ashamed. This is a new law, even for you. Maybe you better go. These people can't help you. They don't believe you. I do. I can help. You didn't say you were a journalist, Mr Rayner. And you lied about being a friend of Dr Malloy. Please leave. OK. I'll go. But I will help you, Mrs Hamilton. I will help you and Max. What did you tell him, Maeve? Everything. I'm such a fool. I'm going to lose the house for certain. Oh, please help me. Please, please help me. The souls will be lost forever and it'll be my fault. Oh, Max. Max. Aoife, call Brian, oh, will you? We've got to calm her down. <laughs> How is she, Brian? Resting, uh, sedated. She's tired and maybe the shock of the fire is kicking in. She was raving about lost souls. Do you know what that's about? She needs help. She's delusional and potentially lethal. We think she caused the fire. Mm. Oh. Well, um, I'll have her kept under observation. She'll be okay for the next few days. And you should go home. Yes, I will. Thanks. Later. And I think we should be heading for the airport. Yeah. Dad, I think Maeve is in safe hands. Go on. Get out of here. <laughs> Have a wonderful time. See you in one day. Mm. Take care. See you, Morgan. Bye. Bye. Max? Is that you, Max? It's me, Maeve. Dr Malloy. Lorcan. Max? I can't see you anymore. Is everyone okay? Don't let them take the house. What would become of them? They'd be lost forever. Help me, Max. Help me to gather them in. It's okay, Maeve. It's okay. It's Lorca. Thank you, Max. I'm afraid there's not much you can do for her now, Doctor. Ah, oh, Daniel. 
I tried to help her. I told people that she was losing her mind. Nobody listened to me. Daniel. Daniel, leave the house alone. Don't take away the house. The house will have to go. Still, there will be plenty of cash to make sure that she's properly cared for. Not the house. Max, help me. Don't let him take the house. Max, She has don't. lost it completely. You can't talk about this here. She can hear you. She doesn't know what anyone is saying anymore. Do you enjoy upsetting her? No. It's a pity it came to this, but at least now we get shot of that house and finally live in peace. I'll be back to see her in the morning. Good night. Sleep tight, Mother. This will be all over soon and we can finally get back to some kind of normality. I'm afraid it's not that simple, Daniel. I'm sorry, do I know you? No, but I'm here to help you. You cannot sell the house. That really is none of your business. You cannot sell it. It is needed. I know who you are. I know what you are, even if you don't know it yourself. Get away from me. You're scared of that house, Daniel. You mustn't be. What are you talking about? The lost souls. I know about them. I know they are real, and so do you. Don't fear them. Welcome them. It was your mother's calling, and it's yours as well. How do you know? How can you know? You've seen them, haven't you? The house is cursed. The things I saw there, growing up. I knew it. Your mother thought that you didn't see them. She said that she and Max asked you, but you said you saw nothing. I was the poor child with the crazy parents who ran the empty guest house. How do you tell someone that you see people, imaginary people? I saw them all right, every night, walking through the house. They weren't imaginary. They are drawn to Braemar House because it is halfway between this world and the next. I saw them when I was a child. They come seeking refuge, lost because they can't cross over. They're not ready. Try to understand your father found peace in that house, and you can too. Max was the gatekeeper, and one day you will be. Hello? Uh, Lorcan, uh, I wanted to see you. Are, you. are you still there at the hospital? No. Uh, it's about Mrs. Hamilton. Is she okay? Oh, yes, yeah, she's fine. In fact, I think you'll find she's the happiest she's been in a very long time. I see. Well, that's very good news, Fergus. Look, um, I can't really talk right now. I'm at the airport. Uh, I spoke to Daniel. He understands now. He's not going to sell the house. What? What's brought that about? You know I don't consider it a good idea for you to be meddling in their private affairs, Fergus. That house has been the source of a major anxiety for Hamilton's for years. I'm sorry, Lorcan. You're breaking up. I think the aircraft must be interfering with your reception. I'll call you later. Dad. Hi, Lorcan. Well, it's nice to have you back. Well, I hardly have to ask if you enjoyed Paris. Oh, it was fantastic. Beautiful. Yes, it was magical, thanks. Well, that's OK. Just hand over the bottle of champagne you owe me. Hello. I will not be sold for a bottle of champagne. Uh, uh, here. <laughs> we didn't forget. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a very good vintage. How's Maeve Hamilton? Uh, you know, I don't know. I just got a call from Fergus Rayner about her. He wasn't making that much sense. No, you don't say. Uh, uh, look, I might just swing by there on the way in. Do you mind? Hello, Daniel. Eva, Lorcan, well, this is unexpected. Please do come in. Thanks, Dan. Uh, this is Gillian. She is just leaving. I, I, I don't understand. This is a great offer. I can't go any higher. Sorry, Gillian. The house is not for sale. Not now, not ever. You're not seriously going to try and make go of this place. Who would want to stay here when there are perfectly good hotels half a mile up the road? Please, think about what you're doing. Goodbye, Gillian. I, I was wondering how your mother is. Oh, very well, all things considered. We discharged her from the hospital. She's back home. She's here. That's what she wanted. She is resting in a room. Which room is she in? Room two, of course. That's her room. Are you sure that's wise? There's something about being here that distresses her. Yes, surely after all that talk about the guests. Oh, don't worry about them. They'll be fine. 
There are guests here. Of course. This is their home for now, until they're ready to go. Mother needs help now to look after them. I'm sorry if I overreacted. I didn't mean to waste your time. Thank you for all that you've done. Look, I really don't think it's good for either of you to stay here. Sometimes you can have a little too much history in the family. Dr. Malloy, the man who spoke to you, who woke you to save you from the fire, did so because he knew that, at the time, you had my mother's best interests and those of the house in mind. What's become clear to me now is that there are others to be thought of. If we were to sell the house, they would be lost for good. We can't have that. It's not healthy for them to be in that house. Are you saying that the house is making them unstable? They are running a guest house for invisible guests. They both insist their guests are real. Is it a hereditary condition? Could well be. But then again... What? Who did speak to me in room two? I've no idea. Maybe it was Max. Maybe it was your imagination. An extrasensory perception of danger manifesting itself as a concerned man's voice. Well, that's a theory, I suppose. I'm sorry? It's possible. I think it would be better if we said it was probable, Dad. Otherwise, we could all end up in that house with Daniel and Maeve. And we don't want that, do we? No. I suppose you're right. We don't want that. In episode 5 of Mind's Eye by John Murphy, Lorcan Malloy was Dermot Crowley and Aoife Malloy was Cathy Belton. Fergus Rayner was Mark Lambert, Brian Walsh, Richard Orr, Maeve Hamilton was Stella McCusker, Daniel Hamilton, Misha Doherty, and Gillian Power, Anya McCartney. Mind's Eye was directed in Belfast by Owen O'Callaghan. Mm-hmm.